we're going to be talking about two of my favorite things, renderless components or headless components and pushing logic out of your components into other parts of your system. We're also going to be talking about one of my least favorite things, which is imperial units. The goal is going to be making a headless component, which tells you how far you are currently are from the North Pole. We're going to use the geolocation API, and we're going to see a number of ways we can improve the design of the initial template. Let's get started right now. This is the initial template. We have this North Pole distance component, which currently renders nothing, and this is going to be the renderless component. This is something we could ship to a user and allow them to, to build their own styles, something which is becoming more and more popular in the React view and I assume other communities as well. We have a look at the definition. We have this simple boilerplate. We have a computed property for the distance. We have the coordinates, which is going to be a reactive version of the geolocation API. And we have the ability to change between imperial and metric units. The first thing we're going to implement is the logic to be able to determine where we are currently located in respect to the North Pole. We have some utility functions. Let's go ahead and have a look at those. And here they are. We have distance or get distance kilometers with this very complicated piece of mathematics. We then have uh, miles version, so imperial. And then we have some helper functions. This is copy pasted from Stack Overflow, which is not the worst thing, but you definitely would want to go ahead and make sure you understand how this works before you push it into production. Of course, I already did that. I checked out what this formula is using. It is using this have a scene formula. Uh, there is a proof here on Wikipedia. And there's also a really good page that explains exactly how this works. So those are definitely worth checking out. Another thing you probably want to do is make sure the code you're using is uh, good. In this case, the use geolocation API. I already checked that out as well. You should do it too. Go to view use and you can see the implementation by just scrolling down here and clicking on source. Either way, I'm happy with the code we're going to use, so let's go ahead and get started. We're going to start off with the distance, so let's go ahead and use that function. We're going to check our units first, so if units.value is equal to kilometers, we're going to use the metric version. So I'm going to return get distance in kilometers, passing in the latitude and the longitude. That's going to be coordinates.value.latitude first, so latitude, then we're going to say coordinates.value.longitude. Uh, let's just make sure we type that in correctly. Uh, I'm not really happy with how this is implemented right now. I'm going to get it working and then we're going to refactor it. Either way, if it's not kilometers, it must be uh, the metric version or the imperial version. So we're going to do exactly the same, but get distance in miles. Uh, it turns out this can be undefined. This is going to be a promise. So we need to make sure we're doing a defensive check for that as well. So I'm going to see if coordinates uh, dot value, longitude or latitude is undefined. If either one of these is undefined, we're just going to go ahead and return. So we're going to do a check on both of these, coordinates.value.longitude. If so, we'll just return and we'll figure out how we're going to implement the load state in just a moment. Finally, let's see if we can get something working. Before we implement our headless component, let's go ahead and get rid of this slot and just go ahead and render something. I am going to render, render the distance. We save this off and head back to our browser. I'm hoping to see how far I am in kilometers. Actually, the default is going to be miles, which is a horrible idea. Let's go ahead and fix that up head back to our browser and see what happens. We can see it is NAND by default, which is probably because my browser permissions are not correct. I'm going to refresh this one and hopefully it's going to render out. Uh, there we go, it took a little while. We definitely do want to handle that load state. Either way, I'm apparently 13,000 kilometers from the North Pole, which does sound about right because I'm currently located in Australia. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is go ahead and implement toggling of the units. Another very easy one, we just need to check the current unit. So I'm going to say unit.value and set that to equal uh, different value depending on what it's currently equal to. So for example, if it's equal to kilometers, we're just going to go and set it to be miles. Otherwise, we're going to do the opposite, which is going to be kilometers. I made the wrong syntax there. Let's go ahead and fix that one up. And finally, we need to see what this error is talking about. Uh, it's saying now assignable because I put the wrong value in here. The next thing we're going to do is leave this. I'm confident this is going to be working correctly. Uh, what I would like to do is make a refactor to this code. I really dislike having this check here. What I would much rather do is push this complexity down inside of my function or inside of my logic, which is going to be these two functions. What I mean by that is instead of having get distance in kilometers and miles scattered through my uh, component code, I'm going to go ahead and push it down inside of here. We're going to export a new function and this one's going to be called get distance. And we're going to take both the latitude, the longitude, and we're also going to have the units. So let's just paste that one in here. We're also going to have unit, which is going to be kilometers or miles. So I'm going to go ahead and define a new type for that, kilometer or mile. 
Finally, we're going to pass that one in here to get that nice, nice type safety and go ahead and make sure we're exporting this type as well. Finally, I'm going to head back to my component and grab this logic and move it inside. And this is going to be much better to me. I have all my logic here. I've removed my reactivity so we can remove value. And this is going to be stateless. It's a simple function and it's going to be dead easy to test. Let's go ahead and delete both of these. Uh, it's going to just be longitude and latitude. So I can say lat and long. And we can do exactly the same thing down here as well. Let's just change that one. Oops, uh, delete these two and say lat and long. Uh, we can see everything is now compiling, so it should be working just fine. Uh, these are now going to be private, so I'm going to avoid exporting all three of these. And this is going to be our public API, get distance. If we save it off and head back to our component, of course, everything is now broken. Let's go ahead and fix it up by importing get distance. We're also going to grab the units as in unit. Now we're going to go ahead and fix this up as well. It's going to delete these two. And finally, we're going to say get distance, passing in our values. So coordinates. <laughs> coordinates.value.lat, coordinates.value.long. Finally, we need the units as well, so let's go ahead and pass that in as well. It's just going to be unit.value. We should go ahead and return that, and this is a whole lot better to me. Yeah, it's going to be much easier to test get distance, which is sufficiently complex. We definitely want to make sure we write a lot of tests around this. Now our component is very simple. We only have our reactivity here, and then we pass it all off to our business logic, which is going to be isolated. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is see if this is actually working correctly. We have our slot here. We're going to go ahead and pass in distance, and that's just going to be our reactive variable, so distance. I'm also going to pass in toggle unit because I'd like the, the component the user implements to be able to toggle those values. Finally, let's save it off and head over to app and see if we can get this working. Uh, that's actually one thing I'd like to do, and that's change these types here. I'd like to have one source for my types, and that is just going to be unit. <laughs> Amazing how much that bothers me, but I have seen this lead to bugs. Uh, it's much better to have a single type for everything. Finally, let's head over to our app and see if we can implement this. The way these uh, headless components or renderless components works is you use vslot, and this is going to be an object with all the arguments. I can go ahead and say distance, and you can see I'm actually getting type completion here, which is pretty incredible, thanks to the Volar plugin. If I go ahead and say go to definition, it actually takes me here. And what's even better is if I head back to app.view, I'm actually getting type definitions here, number or undefined. I'm going to just assume this is implemented for now. We'll deal with the load state later. Let's go ahead and render this. I'm just going to say distance and pass in my value of distance. I could do something different down here. I'm just going to do something a little bit different and say uh, another component just to prove this is working. Uh, so we'll say another component and pass in distance. We can do the same thing here with vslot and go ahead and destructure that. Let's save this one off and give it a try. Heading back to my browser, uh, getting nan and nan, which is not ideal. I'll give this one a moment to update and it is working correctly. I'm seeing the distance and we have a different text for the different component. Uh, the final thing I like to do is implement toggling using the toggle function. Uh, this is also very simple. We just go ahead and destructure that one and I'm getting completion on that, which is pretty nice. We'll just go ahead and say toggle in here and I'm going to have a click listener and then we're just going to call it toggle unit. I'll do the same thing down here. Maybe I'll have a different uh, label. I'm actually going to pass in the units, uh, which I'm not receiving right now. So let's go ahead and receive both toggle and unit. We'll go ahead and say the current units here, units are and pass in units. Finally, let's head back to our North Pole component and make sure we're passing down unit, which we're currently not doing. Uh, this is going to be any, which is obviously not typed correctly. We'll head back here and make sure we're passing it down. We have toggle unit and we have distance. Uh, what we don't have is unit and that's just going to be unit. Finally, I think I made one more mistake. So we're going to head back and fix that one up uh, just to make sure it's all working correctly. This one should be toggle unit. Let's give it a try now. Head back to our browser and we can see the units are currently kilometers, which is correct. And I can go ahead and toggle that. So everything is now working correctly. Uh, these components have the data locally, so they're going to be completely independent, which is exactly what I was expecting. Uh, everything is now working correctly. Uh, we did cover quite a few things here. So there's a really nice feature about these renderless components. I can ship this with no styling and people can easily style it themselves. They're highly composable and they are type safe. I think the biggest improvement here, however, was pushing that logic inside of get distance. Uh, this is much more simple to me than what we previously had. Uh, there's one final very cool thing I'd like to show you and that's part of the view used library. If we head over to use geolocation, uh, you can see this actually already comes with a headless component. It's right here, and they've implemented it in a very similar fashion to us. They have vslot using coordinates with longitude and latitude. 
And this is a good example of them pushing logic into a component as well. So what one improvement could be, would be, for example, coming back here and actually refactoring this to use their built-in component. And then we wouldn't need to have this complicated function here. We could potentially bury this even more deeply in our system. Uh, I'm actually not going to do that for now. I think this is implementation is just fine, but that would be a nice exercise to see if you could uh, push your library as much as possible. I think if you are going to use libraries such as view use core uh, and so on and so forth, it is good to use them as much as possible. The whole point of using these high quality third party libraries is to hand off as much code from your code base that you don't have to maintain uh, to somebody else. The only thing you need to do is make sure the code you're using is well maintained. I've already looked at this library and I'm confident it is. Uh, one thing I'm not confident about is this code here. <laughs> Definitely want to go ahead and write some tests and make sure you're happy with this. Uh, I'm going to assume it works for the purpose of this lecture. That does bring us to the end of this final challenge. Uh, while this is the end of the advent of View for this year, there's definitely going to be more content coming, so make sure you stay tuned for that. I'll see you in the next video.